Good afternoon, Veritas scientists. Today is Wednesday, April 29th, 2020, and we are learning about something called natural selection today. But first, we're going to review what we did yesterday on April 28th. So yesterday, we learned two new vocabulary words. Inherit is a verb. It means to uh, basically get something from your parents. When you are born, you inherit certain traits from your parents. You inherit them. You get them from your parents when you are born. Okay, um, you don't need to be taught any of that. It is just you are born with whatever you inherited. Okay, and number two was an instinct. That's a noun. It's a behavioral adaptation that does not need to be learned. So you inherit instincts. All right, instincts are things, they are behaviors that you learn or that you get from your parents, right? Um, you do not need to learn them, actually. You can do them no matter what. All right, so you don't need to learn them because you're born already knowing how to do those instincts. All right, so we went over some examples. We're going to go over some more examples right now. So let's look at the uh, question I left you yesterday. I said, identify one structural adaptation that was inherited by a puppy and one behavioral adaptation or instinct that a puppy was born knowing how to do without needing to be taught. So I made a list. It said to identify one. So I want you to just check this list. These are not the only correct answers. So please uh, send your answer to your teachers so that they can check if yours was also correct. But here's a list of a bunch of different ones. Structural adaptations are changes to body parts. So they're structural. They are physical changes to the body parts of that animal. Okay, so for a puppy, some physical adaptations, structural adaptations, part of their body would be their claws for catching prey and running, right? They have long, sharp claws, so every time they run, they are able to dig really into the ground and move a little bit faster. Um, another one, another body part, another structural adaptation would be their sharp teeth. They have eyes in the front of their head so that they can chase their prey. They have a tail for balance, right? That body part keeps allows them to be able to run and move quickly and keeps them balanced. They have a strong nose for smelling prey, right? My dog can smell an animal from across a couple hundred yards away and it can chase after, right? It's got a really strong nose. Um, and another part of its body or its structural adaptations would be fast twitch muscles for speed. They have muscles that move really, really quickly um, that allow them to run fast, but they also have what's called slow twitch muscles so that they can run for long distances. So those are body parts that have a, um, adapted so that those puppies can survive as dogs, right? And some behavioral adaptations, which are also known as instincts, Right? Things you are born knowing how to do, you do not need to be taught or learn how to do them. You already know how to do them when you're born. So for puppies, they can swim without being taught. Right? You put a puppy in the water, it knows how to swim. It doesn't have to be taught how to do that. It's an instinct or a behavioral adaptation. They know to chase prey without being taught. Right? If Charlie, when it was a puppy, saw a squirrel, it would have chased it. And I never showed him how to do that, and neither did his mother or father. Okay, they know how to drink milk without being taught, right? A puppy automatically knows it's born knowing to go to its mother to, and to drink milk, okay? Have you ever noticed how a dog will, right before it lays down on the couch or on the ground or something, it will walk around in circles like this for a while, right? And you're, and you're like, come on, will you lay down already, right? And it just circles around and then eventually they lay down. That's an adaptation, so they do that, they turn their body around in circles before laying down so that they can flatten the grass. Remember a long time ago, they didn't live on in the house on your couch, right? They had to sleep in tall grass. So that's a behavioral adaptation. That's an instinct they're born knowing before they go to lay down, they walk around to pat down what would have been the grass that they were going to sleep in that night. Pretty cool. Um, and... Let's see, I put this one over as a body part because as I thought about it, this was a structural adaptation. That's why I moved it over here. Dogs salivate when they see food. Salivate means to drool. So if you were to hold a piece of steak up in front of a dog when it was born, a puppy, it's it would start to drool, right? It doesn't need to be taught to do that, but that is part of its body also. So I actually moved it over to the structural adaptations because it's part of its body that reacts in a certain way that makes them salivate when they see food. And the last one I put here is that they bark when they hear a predator, right? That's a behavior that they were born knowing to do. 
Nobody has to say when no, and you see somebody come to the door, you bark at them, right? That's an instinct, that's a behavioral adaptation that has allowed dogs to be able to survive. All right, so that's kind of a review of yesterday. Give yourself some snaps. I'm sure you worked hard on those. You guys are doing a good job. Um, I wanna see what you guys put as answers, so please send me your answers. All right, so today's Wednesday, April 29th. We are learning about something called natural selection, okay? Um, so natural selection, here's the vocabulary word. It's only the strongest and healthiest animals and plants in a species will survive and will pass those traits on to their offspring or their children. Okay, so through the process of nas natural selection, it's basically saying that only the strongest animals or plants in that species will survive. So only the strongest and toughest and, and healthiest wolves are gonna survive. Only the strongest and healthiest bears are gonna survive. And those ones that survive will then pass those traits on to their children. Their children will inherit them when they are born. Okay, so let me give you an example. So a dog has a litter of nine puppies, right? So a mom, mother dog has nine babies, but only eight of them can drink her milk at a time. So the runt, the puppy that isn't getting enough milk because it's pushed around by its stronger siblings, will die of starvation. The puppies that survived will pass their traits on to their children, which will make those children stronger and then more likely to survive. Okay, so let me just try to kind of say that again. If a mother, for example, has nine puppies, but she can only feed eight of them at a time. All right, there's only eight places for the puppies to be able to get milk. So that ninth puppy is not going to get the milk that it needs to survive. If it's not big enough, if it's not strong enough, it's not going to get the milk it needs to survive. It's eight brothers and sisters are going to get all the milk, and that one puppy is not going to get enough milk because those stronger siblings pushed that other puppy out of the way to get the milk, right? So that puppy is called a runt. I'm sure you've heard that word before. And those puppies will die because unless, you know, unless a human takes them in and takes good care of them, but in the wild, that ninth puppy would die because it would starve to death, right? So then those stronger brothers and sisters, when they have kids, their kids are going to inherit that same strength that they had that allowed them to survive with that brother or sister, that one puppy did not survive. Right, So then when that dog has puppies and then that dog has puppies, only the strongest ones survive every time. So after a long amount of time, you end up with the strongest puppies that you can possibly have. Okay, So that's also known as survival of the fittest, natural selection it's called. So basically only the strongest, the healthiest, the smartest, those are the ones that are going to survive from a species. And the ones that are not as strong are gonna die, all right? So the strong qualities or the strong traits are gonna get passed to the kids, and then those will get passed to their kids, and those will get inherited by their kids, and so on, okay? So that is called natural selection, okay? So here's our question for today. It says, identify two structural adaptations and two behavioral adaptations of a gecko. And here is a gecko. I'm gonna cover it up because it gives you one of the answers there. I want you to look at this gecko, look where it lives in its habitat. I want you to tell me what are two structural adaptations and what are two behavioral adaptations that have allowed geckos to still survive today. All right, and that's it, okay? What I'd like to do now is just, if, until the camera runs out, I think it's gonna run out of time soon, but this is a little bit of what we already know that um, you should kind of test yourself to see, do you know these things? Okay, it says animals have adaptations for survival. An adaptation is a trait that allows an organism to survive better in its environment. Adaptations protect animals from predators as well as from severe weather, starvation, and other threats. Useful traits in the body parts of an animal are called structural adaptations. Behavioral adaptations are behaviors that are inherited. Behavioral adaptations are sometimes called instincts. Instincts do not have to be learned. Animal species develop adaptations through the process of natural selection. That's what we learned about today.
The strongest and healthiest animals are the ones most likely to survive and have offspring or babies. Those offspring are likely to inherit the useful adaptations of their parents. Over time, the adaptations that made a group of animals strong and healthy become common throughout the population. If a species does not adapt, it will become extinct. Okay, so this is really what we talked about today, is that over time, the adaptations that made a group of animals strong and healthy become common throughout the population. Okay, so then those animals are getting those strong and healthy genes. They're getting those strong and healthy traits from their parents. And then before long, that species is stronger than it would be. And it's much stronger and healthier and much more likely to be able to survive in the wild. All right, and that's it. I'm excited to see what you guys put for tomorrow with this gecko. Two structural adaptations and two behavioral adaptations of a gecko, and we will talk to you then. Have a great day. See ya.